Hi folks, welcome back to Physics with Captain Rod. I just wanted to put on a little mood music here. So uh, what we're going to do here is we are going to um, take a look at these two curves here, uh, one defined by y equals uh, a over h times x, and another one here, this parabolic curve, defined by y equals h over a squared x squared. And what we're going to try to calculate here is iy, the moment of inertia of this area about the x-axis. So to do that, we have to know how moment of inertia is calculated. So remember, if I have some sort of uh, little element here, some sort of little dA, the moment of inertia about the y-axis is equal to x squared dA. Now technically, if that's a dA, this would actually be diy. So I'm going to start with that. Now. First thing you always do in one of these calculations is you draw the differential element that we're working with. And there's two types of elements I could draw. Let me draw both of them here. Here's one possible element, a horizontal type of element. And here's a vertical type of element. Now technically both of these could probably be used to calculate the moment of inertia about the y-axis. But this one is not one we probably want to start with. Because you'll notice that the distance from here to here, here to here, here to here is varying. Um, we could actually do it. We could use probably the parallel axis theorem, but uh, that would be just making this tougher than we need to. This would be the preferred element here. So let me go back and get rid of these. And I'm going to draw just a single element here. And it's important to realize the dimensions of this element. So the thickness of this element is going to be a dx. And then the length of this element we're also going to need that's going to be this distance in this problem. And that's going to be this distance minus this distance. So that's going to be equal to this function. So I'll put length of the rectangle is going to equal h over a times x minus the bottom function, h over a squared x squared. Now, I think I should have mentioned a little more about the advantage of the vertical rectangle here. When calculating the moment of inertia about the y-axis, notice that the distance from here to anywhere on that rectangle is just x. So that distance is constant and that's what makes it a kind of an easier math problem. All right, so iy, I'm going to start with this. diy is going to equal, again, this distance squared, so that's going to be x squared times this thing's area which it's going to be its length, h over a times x minus h over a squared x squared times its width, dx. So this, this product gives me the differential moment of inertia of this rectangle about the y-axis. Total, mom, uh, total moment of inertia, we have to add those all up. In this case, x is running from 0 to a. And let's see what we have here x squared times h over a x minus h over a squared x squared dx. Okay, so now it's just a matter of working the integral out. Next line here, so this animal right here, we're going to have an h over a, then it's going to be x to the third dx, that's going to integrate to x to the fourth over 4, and again that's going to run 0 to a minus this next integral, we're going to have h over a squared constant can come out in front. Then we're going to have the integral of x to the fourth, which is x to the fifth over five, again running from zero to a. All right, so this term, let's see, a to the fourth over a is a to the third. So that front term is going to be h a to the third over four minus this term right here. When we put an a right here, we're going to have, let's see, a to the fifth over a squared is h to the third. So we're going to have minus, I'm sorry, a to the third. So we're going to have minus h a to the third over five. And these are like terms. Common denominator is 20. So we're going to have five times this guy minus four times this guy over 20. So we're going to have h a to the third over 20. Uh, and that thing's done. So kind of a short problem. Um, again, intended to be just a quick example of how to calculate the moment of inertia of an area. It's actually called the area moment of inertia really is probably the best term for it uh, about 
the y-axis. Now, I'm not going to do it in this example, but if we wanted to calculate the moment of inertia about the x-axis, I would recommend a rectangle that looks like this. And the reason is because this distance is constant. You won't need the parallel axis theorem for it. And then this thing's dimension is going to be this x value. You'd have to solve that for x minus this x value. You'd have to solve that for x. That would give you the length. The width is dy. The height to the x-axis is y. And you can set up an integral accordingly. So I hope this integral helps uh, demonstrate how to uh, calculate those uh, second moments of area. Have a great day.